Hi, in today's proof, I'm going to prove the composition of functions limit proof. So what we want to prove is that the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x is equal to f of the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Now to make this a bit simpler to understand, I'm going to let the limit as x approaches a of g of x to be equal to l. So we're trying to prove that this is equal to f of l. And of course, this limit has to be defined. Using the epsilon delta definition, what we want to try to prove is that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if this is true, then this is true. If you don't understand the epsilon delta proof, I will link a video in the description below that goes through a bunch of limit proofs with the epsilon delta definition. But if you don't care about the epsilon delta definition, don't worry, I'll present a proof without the epsilon delta definition. So there are a few restrictions for the proof. The first one is that we need the limit as y approaches b of f of y is equal to f of b. More specifically, we want y is equal to g of x and b is equal to l, so we want limit as g of x approaches l of f of g of x is equal to f of l. What does this mean? It means that we have a restriction that f must be continuous at x equals l. This is the definition of continuity. It means the limit on both sides of x equals l is equal to the point itself. The second one is limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to l. And here I'm going to present to you the intuitive understanding. As x approaches a, g of x gets closer and closer to l. And here we have as g of x gets closer and closer to l, f of g of x gets closer and closer to f of l. So if we chain them together, we get as x approaches a, f of g of x approaches f of l, which then we have proven the statement. But of course, it's not that easy. We need to make our proof more rigorous. And here's where the epsilon delta definition comes in. Here we have for all epsilon 1 greater than 0, we already use epsilon here, we have to use a different variable, there exists a delta 1 greater than 0 such that implies And from this, we have a second thing. We have for all epsilon 2 greater than 0, there exists a delta 2 greater than 0 such that this, if this is true, then this is true. And now, here's where we can make a clever substitution. We see that we have 0 smaller than g of x minus l in absolute value. Smaller than delta 1 implies that. And we also have g of x minus l here. So let's make a substitution that epsilon 2 is equal to delta 1. Since we know that it's true for all epsilon 2 greater than 0, it's also true for some delta value. So let's do that. And here we have basically finished the proof. This statement implies this statement. And that's the same statement here implies this statement. 
what this means is that this statement implies this statement so what we have proven is that for all epsilon 1 greater than 0 there exists some delta 1 or sorry delta 2 greater than 0 such that 0 so the x minus a the absolute value implies this And that's what we're trying to prove here. We have already proven it. We can just make a substitution that E is equal to uh, epsilon 1 and delta is equal to delta 2. And this is proven. And if this is proven, well, these two equations are uh, the same. So we have proven the composition of functions, limit rule, or whatever you call it. Thank you for watching.